Are you or someone you know looking to buy or sell a home? When you use a Home Gain Realtor to buy or sell a home, you can get $150. Visit HomeGain.com and click on the Promo 150 banner at the top of the page to get started. Compare Home Gain Realtors and choose your favorite. Complete your home purchase or sale transaction with the Home Gain Realtor, and Home Gain will pay you $150. Get started today by going to HomeGain.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper, joined today by my guest, Louis Camarosano, the general manager of Home Gain. A quick reminder, the show is designed to build the Washington, D.C. Metro's housing and credit markets one house at a time by giving you guys good free advice. If you ever have any questions, concerns, or real estate needs, the best number to reach out to us is 877-245-2030. That's 877-245-2030. 2030, or you can visit us via the web at realestate360live.com. That's realestate360live.com. Louis, are you there, buddy? I'm here, Ryan. All right, great. Today? I'm doing well, sir. Good, good to hear from you. So um, as I was discussing in the first segment, you know, kind of going over the fiscal cliff and, and how I really don't think much is going to get done between now and the end of the year, obviously with the holiday approaching. Um, I kind of wanted to get your take on that real quick. I mean, obviously, uh, it looked like Republicans were starting to budge a little bit where they had said that they're willing to allow for higher taxes on millionaires, but I don't think that that's going to be enough for the the president to um to to just give in at that i think it's going to take more than that he's already made it clear that he wants it what on people that are making over 250,000 so there's yeah. a pretty large gap there between 250 and a million dollars uh so i don't really see that that's going to be enough for him to give in and do you think that they're going to be able to put something together by the end of the year? Is this going to get pushed to, be, uh, to the beginning of January, and they're going to have to just do some sort of emergency thing to, to push things over? I think the only way they'll get anything done, Ryan, I think you covered all the main points. We've been talking about this for weeks, is that the Republicans cave on the demands of the president, and they're probably more likely to do so than uh, the president is to give in to their demand. So you'll either see something where taxes get raised, very few cuts get made, and the can gets kicked down the road, and the markets cheer. Otherwise, they let it happen, and then we see what happens. But the, but the whole thing has been a farce to date, and uh, I think we spent enough time on it. Yeah, I, I agree. And you know, the, the interesting part about it is, is that you know, we've—I feel like we've spent enough time on it talking about it, right? But every single day, this is what the media That's is pushing I mean. out there. I, I Wall mean, Street. You and I. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I feel like that we have, too. It's kind of like, you know, we, we talk about it every single week because that's the only thing that they're pushing out there day after day. Um, as, if the, as if the issue didn't exist during the presidential campaign last year, year and a half ago. Yeah. It only exists when they decide to, to make it. And that, that's the problem with the whole political process. They don't really do anything until the focus is on, and then they realize, oh, it's too late. We didn't have enough time. Uh, we're at this standstill, so let's go home for Christmas. <laughs> right, exactly, and then we'll, we'll worry about it when we come back from from break, and, and as if it's you know it's it's just a small little issue that you know shouldn't have got any attention all through the the whole last year, um, and you know I, people are asking, okay, well, so they don't come up with anything. Do I think that that's going to do anything with interest rates? Uh, at this point, the Fed is buying up you know such a large percentage of of the overall treasuries and mortgage backed security market that I, I really don't see them budging and coming up and probably another. 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to discuss what would happen if the Fed decided that they were just going to pull the plug on mortgage-backed securities and what that would do to the market. Um, but before we get to that, I wanted to your, – your, tomorrow, HomeGain is releasing its fourth quarter 2012 home value survey, and I want to see if you could give us a little glimpse, a snapshot of uh, some of the findings that are going to take place tomorrow. Sure, sure. I'll give our listeners a quick preview. Um, as you know, we do a quarterly survey where we ask homeowners and – Realtors, where they think homes, the home price direction is going to be in the coming six months, and we also ask whether they think the president is doing a good job or not. Um, in the fourth quarter of 2011, only 15 percent of homeowners and 15 percent of realtors thought home prices would increase in the coming six months. Last quarter, in the third quarter, 50, that number jumped to 51 percent of real estate agents thinking that homeowners uh, that, that home prices would rise in the coming six months, and 34% of homeowners thought that prices would rise in the coming six months. Now, in the current fourth quarter survey just released, uh, will be released tonight and is on the blog today at, at blog.homegain.com, 65% of agents think that uh, home prices will increase in the coming six months, and 39% of homeowners think that home prices will raise. So it looks like 
we've got a jump from 15% last year in the fourth quarter to 65% of agents thinking home prices will increase, and, the same, and a similar jump, 15% of homeowners to 39% of homeowners uh, from the fourth quarter, 2011 to 2012. So both homeowners and agents have gotten dramatically um, more optimistic about the direction of home prices. And then, Ryan, the other interesting thing is, as you know, we also survey what they think of the president. And in the fourth quarter of 2011, 70% of real estate agents um, disapproved of the president. Now that's down to 61%. And on the homeowner side, 60% disapproved of the president. And now that's down to 50%. So there's a correlation between the president's approval rating and where homeowners and realtors think uh, home prices are headed. That's very interesting. Um, I, I mean, it, it, it's so funny. It's almost like people put so much stock in in in, in just the, you know home sales and home values. Or I mean, it's it, the economy, as if yeah. the president has a lot to do with that. Right. I mean, if anything, they you know they should be having an approval rating of the Fed. You know what I mean? Because they're the ones they're the ones that are actually dictating what's going on in the housing market right now. And the president has very little to do with it. Um, I mean, Fannie and Freddie, they're they're a complete mess. Uh, well, it's the same thing, Ryan. If you look, if we were attacked tomorrow, his approval ratings would go to ninety five percent. Sure, absolutely. And he wouldn't but, do anything. He would just say, oh, well, this is a terrible tragedy. And then everybody would rally around the president. So people's views of, of politicians are based on somewhat, what am I getting? And right. can you protect me? Not based on what they've done or what they're capable of doing, what their policies are. You're listening to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper, joined by my guest, Louis Camarasano, the general manager of Home Gain, discussing the Home Gain fourth quarter 2012 home value survey. Lewis, what, did you see anything in the survey that like lent itself to you know a lot of the major metropolitan areas, people having a higher approval rating? Because that's where we are in the D.C. metro area. I would assume that a lot of agents and a lot of, of actual homeowners probably thought that home values were going to increase in these areas. Did you see yep. any trend across the country like that? Well, we do see. We don't. We can, but we don't generally slice it down to the metro level. We slice it yeah. into regional and into states. Okay. And you do see the states, like most of the Virginia uh, people uh, that we survey, Maryland, the D.C. metro area, we have mm -hmm. seen that increase um, by state. Uh, they, they're the ones who think those particular states have uh, the president performing better, and they have the direction of home prices heading higher more so than some of the other states. Okay. Well, what, you know, after looking and analyzing the survey, what, what, is, what are your thoughts? Like, not just, you know, we're coming to the end of this year. What are your thoughts moving into, you know, the first half of next year and then in the, in the whole year of next year? Do you think that we're going to continue to see these trends hold true as long as interest rates stay suppressed? Well, I think that the trends are being overstated by the – it's interesting, the homeowners – have a less optimistic view than the real estate agents. Mm -hmm. I think the real estate agents just figure enough is enough. We've seen we've definitely turned the corner a bit, and therefore they're starting to show their uh, optimism and maybe project what they'd like to see happen. Uh, right. take, keep in mind that this survey was taken um, during the period of time up to like the last week and a half uh, is when we closed the survey, so all this fiscal cliff talk was uh, on the horizon, was something to consider. I think that, uh, you know, the, the, the direction of home prices really isn't going to head up that much more. Uh, we've had this low interest rate environment. Employment is somewhat improving, but I think for you – know, we don't say by how much. We just say they'll right. increase or decrease. Sure. Yeah, they might increase, but I, I don't expect we're going to be off to the races in 2013. And my prediction for 2013 is we'll probably be about the same. I don't see significant appreciation, even in the areas that have kind of started to head up, like the Washington, D.C. metro area. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I'm, it's in the, I'm, I think it's like like you said, there's like certain areas, and, and ultimately in the D.C. metro area, like we have some really, really hot areas like Arlington, Virginia, you know what I mean, Some that are anomalies from, from the rest of the market just because they're moving really fast and, and there's just not enough supply of those homes, so it's naturally going to drive up their, their prices quickly. Um, but I think as a whole, yeah, like if you take things as a whole, um, I, I just don't, even with 
I would say with the low interest rates that we have and such the demand for housing, I don't really think that the price appreciation is, is rising as fast as the demand is. You know what I mean? Like you, I, in normal markets, I would think that the home prices would have been much higher than they currently are now because you have interest rates that are near 3% levels. I would think that you know everybody – you know, would want to be trying to get in on this, but they can't. They can't because of all of the lending restrictions and the guideline changes, and and lenders actually padding their margins so they're they're not really getting the lowest rates possible anymore. So, um, you know, I, I think that moving forward next year, I think, like you said, I think we're probably it'll probably stay somewhat consistent. The Fed has has stepped in and said, you know, we're going to keep uh, interest rates low for an extended period of time. We're unemployment rate until it starts getting much better, which that's not going to happen. Uh, well, they're it, not even it might it might get better if uh, more people leave the labor force. Sure, because then they don't count. Exactly. You know, I mean, the numbers are so skewed. They, it seems like we can make, basically make up economic reports that that uh, you know suit us as as they see fit. Um, and that's just you know, once again, this is all information that's being pumped out to the public. So when you if you look at it just for face value and you don't do the research and realize that those people that have left the labor force are working part time, they're no longer counting those into the actual unemployment rate. Um, you might think that things are getting better. But that's that just number not, is increasing. Not the, case. the number of people leaving the labor force and the total, uh, the labor uh, participation rate is decreasing, which means fewer people are involved in having a job. Yeah, and I that think that oh, means fewer people are employed. Absolutely, and I think that that is more of the critical thing to be paying attention to is you know what are what's the actual real numbers you know what i mean the real unemployment numbers because that has a more of an impact on housing than what the fed's doing to manipulate the interest rates and you also, know what I mean? Ryan, it depends on where are they employed are they employed in part-time uh, jobs are they employed in government jobs are they employed in manufacturing are they employ- employed in low-paying or high-paying jobs and the answer to most of those questions are more people are employed now by the government. The unemployment rate of government employment of employees is only 3.8%, and many of the people working are now part-time or underemployed. Yeah, That's absolutely. Good for, the, for, the, for the housing market. No, not at all. And we'll discuss more on part-time employees and you know how that affects obtaining a home loan when we come back. Stay right there.